What is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of our F122 driver career mode here on the channel fresh off of beating our teammate a Mick Schumacher for the first time in our rookie season in a very wet and well honestly very boring Spanish Grand Prix. Absolutely nothing eventful happened in that episode and we're headed into Monaco which is usually one of the most boring races of the calendar season in Formula 1 so we'll see what this one is going to bring our way today. We are pushing uh, the boundaries a little bit with some of the engine components coming into this episode uh but you know when it comes to monaco it's not a huge focus on power at monaco so i decided we were actually going to wear some components out a little bit and then try to swap them out going into the next episode of azerbaijan uh where obviously power is everything in baku we're going like polar opposites from monaco to baku which is a lot more wide oh i say a lot more wide but it's still pretty tight around baku with the walls there uh but nonetheless excited for this monaco weekend i did not unfortunately get very many uh replay cameras that you're going to see see in this episode simply because I was very tight on time and had to basically get done. Uh, as soon as I finished the race, I basically had to get out uh, off the PC. So, I unfortunately only got like two replay cameras the whole time you will see here now as we were underway in practice. And, and like we mentioned, we got a little bit of momentum on our side. Now, we were able to finally beat Mick Schumacher in Spain. Uh, it helped that he had a grid penalty and had to start at the bank, but he really struggled to work his way forward. Everybody kind of struggled to work their way forward in Spain, but we did see George Russell Mercedes look very strong however they threw the win away as Max Verstappen was able to undercut them uh, and get back to the top step of the podium which continues Red Bull's six wins six wins to start the season they are unbeatable so far literally they have not lost a Grand Prix to this point in time four wins for, for uh, Verstappen who leads the world drivers championship and two for his Red Bull teammate or Sergio Perez at the beginning of the episode I was showing the R&D and you can see that Mercedes actually right now they're like actually doing way better than what Ferrari is doing and they are seeming to actually close the gap a little bit to Red Bull so I would say keep an eye on Mercedes here in qualifying and we know Monaco qualifying is so so important here uh, as you can see I was some LP2 in practice but as I say I think every episode uh, to Take practice, you know, leaderboard times with a grain of salt. Our team at a mixed remaker, for whatever reason, never actually put down a lap here as we would find ourselves in qualifying here on this Saturday evening. What a beautiful sight here in Monaco. It is such a beautiful scenery when you come here every time. And I'm very excited to hopefully uh, get to, hopefully to queue maybe three because we've continued to make upgrades on this car. And I felt like we had some decent pace this weekend. So I felt like Q3, it's not necessarily realistic. It's a bit of a stretch but it's possible here in Monaco but it all starts with getting a good first round of course advancing into Q2 and we were having a decent first lap here wasn't too too bad you see us going through the hairpin in such the slow sweeping left right right handed corners right here uh, in the second sector then you go through the tunnel of course down towards this little bus stop chicane right here and you've got to be very aggressive on track limits you can gain a lot of time if you be a little bit aggressive on the track limits through there uh, as we come through one of my favorite sections in Formula 1 right here. This little right-left chicane as well with the sweeping left-hander before that now. But then we come to one of my least favorite sections. I really hate these final two corners. Never been a fan of them. Uh, but nonetheless, we get the power down. Had a decent opening lap here in Q1. We would cross the line and currently go P2. We would drop down to P10. Uh, and that was pretty comfortable. But I decided to make a second lap just in case because I saw everybody, of course, is going for it. I come out behind uh, Esteban Ocon here now. So hoping that he is going to move out of the way here any moment as we continue to close in on them but it's not gonna matter because we've crashed in qualifying anyways i lost the rear end and into the barrier we go and out of qualifying we go just like that in the blink of an eye we go from looking at q2 to losing the rear end over correcting head on into the guardrail and we're done we're out as well we would get eliminated schumacher moves on to q2 but that, that is the end of the day we will start p18 with three canadians at the bottom myself stroll as well as nicholas latifi let's head to the grid we now have a lot of work to do a proper road race and in the true meaning of the word that's how mr monaco the late great graham hill once described this iconic event the cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. 
there's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 meters up the hill, past the casino and then descend towards the harbour through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of 19 corners and don't expect to see much overtaking here today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Sainz, Charles Leclerc, and Norris, Perez, Ricardo, Fernando Alonso, and Esteban Ocon, Bottas, Joe, Pierre Gasly, and Albon, Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, Sebastian Vettel, and Golden Boy, Stroll, and Nicholas Latifi. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Alrighty then, starting from P18 on the grid, we're starting on the hard compound tire, going to the mediums, take some feel out of the car, and try the overcut strategy to gain position. That is the goal today, but let's see, obviously, if it's going to work out. Let's head to the formation lap. Here we go then, the formation lap is underway and the track temperature looks warm. That may or may not play into some of the team's hands in today's race. positions on the grid with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. Hey guys, sorry again about yesterday. Thank you to the whole team for the hard work getting this car fixed up for today. I really do appreciate it. I'll try to make the most of it. Not the, of course, qualifying that we wanted to have with wrecking the car for the first time. Uh, however, you know, the team put it back together. We got it fixed in time and prepared to race in our first Monaco Grand Prix. We can't seem to have any weekend without some sort of issue. Obviously, you see the bit of an upset qualifying here. Verstappen not on pole and neither is Red Bull in general. It's Lewis Hamilton. We talked about the improvements that Mercedes is making. Turn one is going to be oh so important here. Here today as we are ready to go five red lights here in the Monaco Grand Prix it's gonna be lights out we're underway here in Monaco Lewis Hamilton it's a good start for Hamilton Russell's alongside for Stafford as they head down into turn one but most importantly for Lewis Hamilton he would come out of turn one ahead of Max Verstappen and say see you later here so that is what you like to see if you're just a fan in Formula One and tired of seeing the same team win the first six races of the season can Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes return to the top step of of the podium here in Formula One in this 2022 season here. Now it's easy to be flying in front of us. Someone lost a bit of a front wing. I believe it was Fernando Alonso actually there as I had completely locked up my front wheels there trying to not run into the back of either uh, Yuki Tsunoda or Sebastian Vettel there in the Aston Martin. But Vettel was able to gain the spot over Yuki Tsunoda actually there in the Alfa Tori as I got fellow Canadians of Lance Stroll as well as Nicholas Latifi just behind myself. But you know, it, after the first half the last in Monaco things are pretty well set for the time being it's so hard to pass in Monaco we were a little bit down on power here in this race and I had mentioned that earlier on we were trying to stretch my components in this engine one more weekend here and we can kind of get away with it Monaco is done nearly Bodo's into the back of Sonoda you see it's actually uh, Alex Albon coming into the pit lane there for a front wing replacement so not Fernando Alonso in the Alpine it was a good start for Albon there but obviously not a good ending to the first lap but we cut straight through 
to lap 4 and absolutely nothing has changed at this point. I can see this being a bit of a quick recap kind of episode here because, well, it's Monaco and unless AI are making mistakes and, and bringing out safety cars, there's not much happening in a Monaco Grand Prix. But I tell you what, even though there might not be much happening, I love driving this circuit. It really is so much fun. 39 laps is a lengthy race, but it's so much fun driving it. I love going to Monaco every season. I know some people absolutely despise this race and, you know, it's not great for racing, but it's fantastic for a driving experience here. Now, as we come through to lap 11 already, I did uh, actually do some damage to the underbody, unfortunately, right there, but wasn't too concerned. Lewis Hamilton uh, st still leading this Grand Prix, actually, over Max Verstappen, as well as George Russell. Perez, he was actually behind signs. Leclerc, Ricardo, Norris as well. It was not a great day for Perez, and obviously, you know, when you're stuck in traffic in Monaco, there's not much you can do. The only option you have is to try either the undercut or the overcut and just hope it works. Lap 14, you can see yellow flags actually in the first sector and it's actually the McLaren of Daniel Ricciardo, I believe, who's having a mechanical failure here. Now, we're about to find out as the message will come up on the screen any moment as we're going to at least gain a position out of that, so no complaints on my end. Yes, it is Daniel Ricciardo out of the Grand Prix. No safety car, race 7 of the season, and we haven't seen a safety car yet. And you know what? The last safety car based off this storyline here that we're doing for the 2022 season. The last safety car that we saw in Formula 1, well, it was a controversial one. It was the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So, uh, can we really blame the stewards for maybe being a bit hesitant to put out the safety car? It's going to be a, a relearning process of, okay, we can put the safety car out and not manipulate the race, hopefully, uh, in the future here. Now, was, I was all over the back now of Yuki Sonoda, but by the time these hard compound tires had started to kick in compared to the medium compound tires, they were all getting ready to pit on their medium compound tires anyways and put on the hards. So I was now just kind of settling in, waiting for those pit stops to kick off, which was Yuki Tsunoda, Sebastian Vettel coming in here right in front of myself. So now we are on the overcut, but I also noticed uh, that our teammate at Mick Schumacher, same strategy. He's on the hard compound tire as well, and he's about 4.3 at this point in time on lap 21 seconds uh, ahead. So we're trying to run him down as much as we can, but he was actually going to pit first between the two of us. Usually it's me pitting first this time. It is going to be Mick coming in uh, first. So he's coming in right here at the conclusion of lap 23 as I briefly tap the barrier there making sure I don't have any wing damage and we are okay. So we continue on without issue. But then here we are at lap 24 coming into the pit lane ourselves for this medium compound tire and hoping for no issues in the pits because it looks like we're slotted in a really good spot to come out right in front of Lance Stroll if nothing goes wrong. Here we go. The hard compound tire comes off. The mediums go on. It's a good pit stop from the team and we take off and you can see on the track map we're coming out a nice spot as long as we can get the traction and the power down and get ahead of that Aston Martin and it's going to be very very close but we're going to make it happen here in front of Lance Stroll here. Fortunately even when trying to warm up this medium compound tire we're still going to be able to stay ahead because it's so hard to pass here uh, at Monaco. If this is a normal track we would probably be under attack from Lance Stroll any second, probably into the next couple of corners, but fortunately, Monaco, we're able to stay ahead, focus in on Mick Schumacher, who's now 6.1 seconds ahead, so we have some time to gain, however, we were gaining the time, he was actually all over the back uh, of Yuki Tsunoda and struggling to get past him, and I was taking advantage, the intensity picks up its game on, we have 13 laps to go, and we are closing in on our teammate at Haas here of Schumacher, 4.2 seconds down to 3.9 on lap 20 and we just continue to put in very, very strong lap times compared to him who's still struggling to get past the Alfa Tori. I don't see any way of him really getting past Yuki Tsunoda. Now, 2.9 seconds on lap 28. And like I said, it's game on at this point here because there's no way he's going to make this happen. We have such an advantage. Tsunoda on the hards both myself and Schumacher on the mediums, so we should be able to run Schumacher down at this pace that we're setting. 2.7 seconds here. Lap 29 coming through the very slow crawling hairpin there down to about, what, 25 miles per hour, uh, but you can see Schumacher within sight now. 1.7 seconds a lap later on lap 30 as we head through the tunnel. 1.6 nearly within DRS range, and here we are. 1.1 seconds a gap at the end of the first sector on lap 31, and there we are. About to with be within that one second threat 
threshold. DRS isn't a huge deal when it comes to Monaco, but it still is going to assist us on our efforts here to try and pass Schumacher now as we come through to a little bit later into the chicane, and you can see yellow flags actually in front of us. It's Sebastian Vettel and the Aston Martin who's got an issue. You're going to see him pull over to the side, smoke pouring out of the back of him. This has changed everything because now Schumacher is out of DRS range on Yuki Sonoda, and I'm all over the back of Mick Schumacher. So now here we have a golden opportunity, maybe our only opportunity all Grand Prix long to be able to actually pass our teammate Mick Schumacher. So we're going to try everything we can to make this happen here. Rear wing open, overtake mode on. Where's Schumacher go? Left or right? He's going to go left. I'm going to go right up the inside. It's going to be side by side contact right there with Schumacher. That's actually going to do some front left wing damage to my car as we're going to drag race here up through the elevation change through the left hander. What a bad battle with Mick Schumacher, our teammate, and he does not want to lose to me, and I want to beat him more than he wants to beat me, and we managed to get ahead. Not the way we want to make an overtake on our teammate, you know, with some contact, with a little bit of wing damage. I wasn't sure what Mick was dealing with on his, maybe, say, right side of that front wing, but certainly still not the way you want to get the pass made, and now it was up to me to hustle this car, because if Mick can stick with us after I just ran into him to pass him, then I would feel like I would have no choice but to do the sportsman-like thing and, and really just let him go so I was really hustling this car in these last 10 laps trying to open the gap and unfortunately we would have a decent gap between us here about uh, 8 tenths 9 tenths of a second at times and he would close it in a little bit down to about 6 tenths half a second but he could never get too close to me so I was pretty confident he also had some wing damage from the contact there that appeared to be uh, quite obviously my fault there uh, on the exit of turn one we would have to take maybe another closer look at it but now lap 37 about nine tenths of a second again between myself and Mick Schumacher uh, as Lewis Hamilton after everything that's happened in this Grand Prix no undercuts this time from Red Bull worked we start the final lap and Lewis Hamilton is about to come through to win in Formula One again for the first time in the 2022 season and most importantly Red Bull is finally going to be defeated as Lewis Hamilton comes through to cross the line. He is a winner in 2022. Unfortunately, he couldn't do that in real life, but he does it in the video game as he wins the Monaco Grand Prix. Verstappen comes up short in second. George Russell is going to be on the podium as well for the second Grand Prix in a row. P3 for him as the two Ferraris uh, as well as the McLaren and Perez come through to cross the line. A very disappointing day for Perez uh, as we come through the final few corners ourselves. We Manage the gap to Schumacher. We got the elbows out. We got aggressive. We made it happen. Not the most, you know, teammate kind of way, but we get through to take P14, P15. A bit of a disappointing day in terms of finishing position for us. It's Monaco. It's hard to pass. We did the best we could with what we had. P14, P15 for Haas. We beat Schumacher two times in a row. Let's go see the podium celebrations with Lewis Hamilton on the top step. Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on track was, speed. I know it sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. I really do hope that this is a sign of things to come because Red Bull was running away with the Drivers' Championship already. We were only six races in and we're like, Red Bull's running away with it and so is Max Verstappen. However, Lewis Hamilton has kind of put a bit of a standstill on hopefully that runaway for both the constructors and the drivers. However, a lot of racing to go. It's a 23 race season. We'll have to see, uh, wait and see what happens here in the next few episodes with Azerbaijan uh, as well as Canada. I think Baku, we could maybe see Ferrari actually show up a little bit more than what they have. Fourth for Carlos Sainz and fifth for Charles Leclerc for the two Ferrari drivers. The Lando Norris and the McLaren with a very strong day in P6. You can see both the Alfa Romeos, Zhou Guan Yu and Bottas as well getting points. So great for Alfa Romeo today. Unfortunately, you know, no points for Haas, but uh, we, we still overall had a very solid comeback race from the crash in qualifying. That is going to wrap it up for this episode and I hope you guys have been continuing to enjoy this driver career mode series uh, and next we go to Azerbaijan the Baku City Circuit very excited for one of my favorite calendar races and hopefully we can have a decent effort there with a hopefully a little bit of an advantage in top line speed but I'll see you guys in the next one from Baku have a great day everybody